of like to dabble about making things using little microcontrollers such as Arduinos and the like. And um, the real reason I got into 3D printing was that um, finding little boxes or cases to put things in was always uh, awkward. And I thought it'd be quite cool to print my own. Um, so that's the reason I kind of started with 3D printing mostly. Um, fair to say that over the years I've made a, a variety of things. Um, a lot of decorative objects which have been multicoloured, which I tend to give them away uh, mostly. But I made quite a few bits and pieces that uh, make my life easier. So I thought I'd do something different and do a, a bit of a house tour and uh, show you some of the bits and bobs that I've made that make my life easier. Uh, you might find it interesting, you might find some inspiration or, or not. Um, anyway, here we go. You've all seen plenty of videos of the printer, so I won't dwell too much on this again, but um, a lot of the parts on this were uh, have obviously been printed. Um, all these these bits here, for example, on the filament filament reel holders, they're all printed rollers and printed brackets and so forth. This panel here, obviously, uh, was, was printed. Things like these gantry plates, these are uh, these are original, printed on my on my ancient uh, Mendel. I just finished printing these. These are a batch of um, little stakes that hold the. Uh, the tubing on my uh, micro irrigation system that I've got. There's my milling machine. These things, were, these things were printed as well. They're just little covers that go over the over the bed and stop all the swarf getting in the tea slots. Which makes it a bit easier to clean. I didn't think they would last very long actually, being plastic, but they're um, holding up alright. Probably just because I only do aluminium and brass and things. And panning around, made a load of these things, holders for uh, collets and collet chuck up in the ceiling, a little printed case there, inside there is one of these little uh, node MCU type things that are hooked into the garage door, so I can open and close the garage door remotely. Um, it's also got read switch on it so I've got a little automation that tells me if I leave the garage door open it will send a notification to my phone and and then I can close it there's various other cases and boxes and things for more of these little DSP modules um, I've got addressable LEDs across the front of my house and there's a module in there that controls that um, uh, there's another one there that controls some lights I've got on my uh, steps out the front, I'll show you them later. And another one, there's some addressable LEDs at the side of the steps. This is quite handy. There's just a micro switch inside there. With a, with a flappy lid. So um, if, I, uh, if I'm coming out of the garage, I can just whack that button. Door. The Talking of lights, I made these ones that uh, go on the steps at the front of my house. The bit on the left is um, is basically a bulb holder, um, has those little plug-in LEDs, and then uh, there's an O-ring sits in a in a groove, and then the bit on the top screws down to it, and it makes a water-type cell. Uh, I'll show you those. So these are the um, step lights fitted. They're shaped so that the um, when I bring out my wheelie bin once a week, the wheels don't um, frown on the light. That's why they're, the, they're that kind of wedge shape. So the controller turns them on around about sunset, um, and they, they fade up to about 40% brightness. And then uh, somewhere about 11 o'clock at night, they fade down to 25% and they stay at that all night, and then go off at sunrise in the morning. This is one of my log stores that I built outside the house. I've got a friend that brings me logs now and again, um, but they're never, um, they're never seasoned, so I have to season them first. I need to burn the oldest wood first, so I made these little numbers. Basically, just slide in and out, so... 
So when number one is uh, used up, then I just uh, take the number out and move it around and then number two will become number one and number three will become number two, etc. So I'm always burning the oldest wood first. So they just printed printed holder and a printed number and they just slide in and a kind of dovetail type thing. There's another log store. So um, with more little numbers that I can move around. So when the one at the bottom starts to get empty it gets moved from this one to the other one and then I keep moving the numbers all around. Here we are in my shed. This is my homemade propagator. It's basically a sand table with um, Sort of warming cable on it, and then this little box here, uh, the little temperature controller. I just uh, printed a box to hold it. And there's a plant pot with uh, one of the little stakes that I print. And there's a the big ball tube in that goes all around the garden again with a uh, uh, with another printed stake, bigger one. Oh, inside the house now, in the hallway next to the uh, switch by the door, I made a printed little holder to hold the uh, one of the spare remotes for the garage door. Kind of handy just to bang that on the way out without fumbling through. Still in the hallway, um, we've got on top of that cabinet, there's another uh, printed box. It's got another little node MCU inside there with a couple of motion sensors and a, an ambient light sensor which I used to switch those cabinet lights on and off. Now, in the kitchen that's just a, a decorative pot on the windowsill there. This is a litter thing that I printed uh, my daughter and son-in-law on their wedding day. Printed container next to the sink just to keep you know, brushes and nail brushes and soap and odd bits and bobs. It's a bit tidier. Underneath the sink there's another little uh, project box, another little ESP module in there. I've got two um, two wires connected to touch sensor inputs on the ESP module and they um, uh, the ends of those got little probes that go into sponges which are sink underneath the sink. So if I get a flood or a water leak with the washing machine or the dishwasher or anything, that will trigger those touch inputs and then that will send a notification to my phone and play it through the Google speakers as well. But also I've got, um, this is my, my water softener. Um, and so I've put, um, distance sensor in the lid and those ultrasonic thingies um, so that will notify me when the salt level gets low and it needs topping up and while I'm down here looking up there's a, a printed holder for a, um, a little miniature PIR sensor so I use that in conjunction with another MCU which is, sits on top of the kitchen cabinet to turn the lights on. I have a pull out ladder unit I made some of these uh, boxes to kind of organise things a bit better a little um, slots in it and partitions that slide in and out. Let's add a few of those. There's another uh, PIR motion sensor. I found these sensors they can be quite a long way from the uh, from the MCU. The MCU itself is on top of the cupboard up there somewhere. Coffee machine. My wife finds it sometimes quite difficult to uh, open the steam valve. Uh, sometimes it gets really tight so I printed a handle that sits over there and gives a bit more leverage. 
that's about it for the kitchen. I'm going to have a look in the dark. Name I see here, just this uh, decorative vase type thing. We're going to have a look in the living room next. Now I printed that bracket for that camera. The um, the default ones stick out too far from the wall, so I wanted something that would be a bit closer to the wall. So. A couple of printed plant pots. Not much to say about them, really. No, it shouldn't be in here. It's just a printed tray for the um, salt and pepper mill. Stops the bits from getting all over the table. Well, this cupboard houses my um, unvented hot water cylinder with all its associated barrels and pipe work and so forth. So, yet another project box with yet another one of these Node MCU ESP32 type things. So, it's also connected to the um, limit switches that are on the um, motorised barrels. So, uh, my uh, my home assistant um, instance, if you like, will show me the, the state of the valves, whether it's calling for uh, domestic hot water or central heating or neither or whatever. Quite handy for uh, fault finding. Then, the, uh, the black wire that sort of trails up to and goes inside the cylinder is actually um, one of those Dallas temperature sensors in there so it gives me the temperature of the hot water as well because um, well why not and that's what I do for a, a leak detector basically I use um, a PCB type terminal bulk block um, but instead of soldering the wires onto a PCB I just press them into a thin sponge so if that sponge gets wet then they conduct and um, the touch input will then register that as being uh, being wet, i.e. there's a leak. Spot the motion sensor. It's there. And on the other side of the door, there it is, a little box. Another node MCU type thingy in it. And there's another motion sensor on the side. I've been meaning to tidy this up ever since I made it about six or seven years ago. Um, there's a little Arduino inside that printed box, which controls and a, and a shell, and it controls those two steppers. One um, controls the blinds opening and closing, and the other controls the angle of the slats. So this um, 3D printed thingy bob's got three tubes. At the end of each tube is a a light dependent resistor and it print it faces more or less south so the one on the left points to the east and the one on the right points to the west so when the uh, sun comes up it shines a light on one or other LDRs and that then changes the angle of the slats so they rotate so it keeps as much daylight in here as possible but same time it blocks a direct sun which gets in my eyes.
And then finally in the study there's another um, another little MCU and another printed box. That's got a motion sensor on the front and um, an elux sensor on the back behind the monitor. Um, oh, and temperature and humidity as well because why not? And a little relay. So um, so basically if it's dark and I'm sat at my desk and it senses motion, uh, it turns the desk lamp on and uh, and the globe light the other the other side around here. That one there. And if there's been no motion for 15 minutes continuously, then it turns them off again. I just finished finished making this. It's um gonna hang it at the window. Just had some of those addressable LEDs left over from when I did the outside lights. Um, it's all just printed parts, just printed channels and corner bits, and just stuck together with some clear silicon. It'll look better at night in the dark. I use something called WLED to um, control these addressable LEDs so you can have all sorts of uh, effects and stuff going on. I control these LED strips from uh, via, LED, via WLED but through Home Assistant and um, I've set up, um, have it integrated with the Google Calendar. Um, so I can put events in the Google Calendar and Home Assistant will read that and then we'll get a different effect. So for example, it'll soon be um, St George's Day, um, which is patron saint of England. So the, the effect will be kind of effectively red and white. Um, got different things for St Patrick's Day, St David's Day, St Andrew's Day, Easter, Christmas, Halloween and all the other bank holidays. So if there's an event like that in the calendar, then the lights will come on at sunset and the effect will depend on what event, if any, is in the calendar. But obviously this Christmas star will only be at the window uh, over Christmas. The other addressable LEDs as the strip runs the width of the house underneath the gutter at the front and um, both sides of the steps actually kind of buried in the gravel pretty much. So that's it, end of house tour. I probably missed a few things, but anyway, um, just thought I'd show you some of the things that I've been making that uh, make life a bit easier. Um, and the real reason why I originally got into 3D printing. Uh, until next time.